Hey guys, well, I got back from the uh, Utopia of the Seas, and I'm ready to give you my thoughts on the ship, the cruise, what all happened, and so we'll get into it right after this. Utopia of the Seas. Well, it was Royal Caribbean's uh, latest, greatest ship, uh, its newest Oasis class ship, and it was, uh, you know, billed as the biggest weekend at sea. And so they're featuring, you know, three night or three day and four day cruises. It's just kind of guess going in a cycle. So a three day, then a four day, then back to a three. It's uh, sailing out of Port Canaveral. And uh, booked an interior cabin, and uh, so I got to the uh, terminal. Uh, you know, my initial, my boarding time was supposed to supposed to be eleven eleven thirty, uh, but because of the travel, getting there, and some of the delays, I, I got there. I got to the terminal about one o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, so when I got there, they were just boarding all zones. It was just wide open. So you didn't have to wait at all. That you just went right in, and it seemed pretty smooth. Uh, I was able to go straight in, get through security, get checked in, and get on the ship all in about I don't know ten to fifteen minutes. And uh, so the gangway uh, drops you on the deck five, uh, which is the, uh, the the promenade area. And I have to say, I mean. First looks, first impression. I was, you know, I, I was. It was a beautiful, beautiful ship, uh, brand new. Uh, the color schemes, you know, there's no signs of wear and tear on anything. Uh, right there on the Royal Promenade, you, you know, you had the, the brand new uh, pesky parrot uh, bar that uh, uh, they're rolling out. And uh, so, yeah, it, it from the get go, I was blown away. I thought it was really nice. Uh, you know, it had pretty much the same Oasis class layout uh, that that you would expect on any other of the Oasis class ships. I mean, you got your promenade, you got your Central Park, you got your boardwalk, the solarium, you got the, you know, the 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 abyss slide in the back and with the zip line and all of that. Uh, so everything, you know, layout wise was just what you'd expect uh, on any other. Uh, Royal Oasis class ship. You know, I, I had just been on uh, Harmony of the Seas uh, last year about this time. And so very similar, you know, but uh, just 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 newer. Uh, you know, like I said, they had the pesky parrot. That was kind of, a, that's a new thing that they rolled it out. Uh, they had the uh, railway Express or something like that the, the railway themed restaurant. I forget the name of it, but uh, You know that was new And I think there was another maybe a couple other bars that were that were new so You know, and then they had the two-story lime and coconut uh, bar out by the pool area and uh, There's the view bar You know right outside the solarium on one of one of the I can't forget which side it was on I believe it was on the port side maybe and uh, where I believe you could actually smoke cigars out there, so that was kind of neat. And uh, so yeah, everything looked really nice. Uh, and but we'll talk right off the bat. I guess my my biggest frustration and complaint, uh, aside from the price tag, that is, was the uh, the elevators. So apparently, uh, I guess when Royal rolled out the Icon of the Seas, they had these, they implemented these smart elevators. And so basically you go to the elevator banks and there would be these touch, touch pads instead of, you know, the buttons, up and down buttons to push. And you would simply push what floor you're going to and then the touch pad would direct you to the elevator that, you know, corresponded to whatever floor you're going to. And, uh... And, and, but I guess one of the things about it, uh, you know, it depend, you know, who all, like however big your group is. So if, if there's four of you and you're all going to, let's say deck five, then everybody in your group needs to touch the touch pad to let the elevator 
computer, I guess, let let the, let the computer know, hey, there's you know there's going to be four people getting on. So that way it knows which is the best elevator to route you to. And you know it's supposed to be more efficient. That's how they build it. But I can tell you that I did not find it to be very efficient at all. If anything, it it slowed down the process. And I don't know if that's something. Maybe there's some bugs that they need to work out. Maybe in the future, as they get more sailings under their belt, things will improve. I don't know. But I know that there was at least twice that I waited over five, well over well over five minutes each time to get an elevator. Um, uh, so yeah, that's my biggest complaint. The 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 elevator system. I don't know. Somebody needs to take a look at that because I don't really think it was operating properly. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was only a three day cruise. So I knew going in, I wasn't going to be able to hit everything. So I just focused on just trying to enjoy the typical things that I like to enjoy about Royal. Uh, so I wouldn't hit up the, uh, the two story lime and coconut bar. Uh, I always had good service there. I was always able to get a drink right away. No problems. Uh, it was a popular spot at times. Uh, the pesky parrot, I tried to get in there, but man, every time I went there, it was always slammed. So, uh, but it looked cool, you know, from just standing on the outside looking in. I like the theming of, of the place. Uh, it really reminded me of uh, I forget. I think the, there's the bamboo. I think it's I want to call it the bamboo bar or something along those lines on on Navigator of the Seas. Uh, very similar to that, from what I could see. Uh, and the solarium I thought was, was really nice. Uh, went to the solarium bar a lot. Uh, and then of course it was a weekend cruise. So Saturday and Sunday, uh, you know, college football on Saturday, NFL on Sunday. So of course I ended up down, uh, on the boardwalk, uh, at Playmakers. And I really, that's one of my favorite things about Royal is Playmaker Sports Bar. Uh, they had plenty of TVs and they, you know, the, the guy, uh, I believe the manager there, you know, you could just tell him what games you wanted and he would put the, put whatever game on whatever TV that you needed. Uh, the only thing, my only tip on that is if you are going to go on Utopia and you're planning on watching sports, make sure you get to, uh, the play, you know, playmakers right when it opens and get your seat because, it is a popular uh, spot on those days, and the seat, seating areas fill up pretty quickly. And uh, so that's just my tip there. Uh, I did not eat in the MDR at all. Uh, I ate either <clears throat> the places that I ate were the Windjammer Buffet, the Central Park Cafe, Playmakers, uh, and I also ordered room service. So, uh, let's start with the wind jammer because that's usually another one of my f favorite things about Royal, you know, uh, pretty much any Royal ship I go on, I typically eat most of my meals in the wind jammer because it's just, they usually have a lot of options, a lot of seating, you know, you can get a window seat, whatever, but, uh, you know, I, the wind jammer on Utopia uh, so when you go in, you know, you get past the, the, the washy washy station, it kind of, you either go to one side or the other. So, and in the middle is just like a cutout because it's like right above Central Park. And it doesn't really matter which side you go to, same food on each side. There's plenty of serving stations. That was, that wasn't the issue at all. You know, getting the food was not an issue. Plenty of drink stations. Actually, I like the they kind of improved the drink stations, I felt like, with more options and it's a little bit more automated. I didn't, you know, a lot of times, sometimes you have to kind of fight to, to get a, a yeah, at one of the drink stations, but Utopia seemed to have that problem solved, but the problem was the seating. And I know I had discussions with this, about this with some of the other uh, seasoned cr Royal Cruisers that uh, that I that I know and that was on board and, and you know, they seem to think that that the the Windjammer was bigger on Utopia than other ships, and I couldn't disagree more. 
Uh, it, it just it, if it is, maybe square footage wise, it, maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe that's what they're basing it on. But I'm telling you, when I was in there, again, getting the food wasn't the problem. Finding a place to seat sit was a problem, and especially if you didn't if you didn't get there right when it opened. Then you you know I you know the first time I went in there, you know I circled for I don't know how long to find a seat, and uh, so I you know I had I had to learn you know if I want to go up there, I got to get there before it opens you know, uh, and then I like I get like I said I ate at the uh, Central Park Cafe down in the Central Park area it's it's one of the complimentary places, and uh, and I thought it was a good spot a lot of people don't think about it it's quiet. I mean, their options are limited. It's mostly like sandwiches, soups, salad, that kind of thing. But I don't know. I thought it was it was good for me. Good to you know jump in and get a uh, a, a nice bite to eat in a quiet setting. Uh, so I thought the food was good. I, I I you know I loved it, especially for breakfast. That's also a, a good option, and it keeps you from having to go. You know, with that elevator issue, it kept me from having to try to fight it to get up to the windjammer. Um, oh, and I did eat at Chops Grill first night, first dinner. Uh, I was out on the boardwalk area. I didn't have a reservation. And one of the crew members came around and uh, was just trying to find people that wanted to go. And she talked to me and uh, she asked me if I was interested. I said, yes. She asked me when I wanted to eat. I said, well, how about right now? And she said, let's go. And she took me right from there. And this was like a little, little bit after five. And we went straight to um, uh, Chops. And she got me right in. She got me a 20% discount. And, you know, I thought the food was awesome. It's just what you'd expect at any other Chops grill. Um, the uh, I had the filet mignon. It was grilled perfectly. Uh, and they had the, uh, the meringue key lime, key lime pie, and that, that was really good. Highly recommend it. And then, you know, the other place I ate at was Playmakers. Uh, they, you know, it's a bar, but they do serve, uh, you know, burgers, wings. Uh, they have the onion ring tower, quesadillas, that kind of thing, loaded nachos. And I think one time I had the burger... The, uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's the Playmaker's Double, I think is what it's called. Really good. Huge. Uh, definitely filled me up. And uh, I also had the wings. Wings were, I thought, some of the best wings I've ever had on a cruise ship, for sure. And then the Onion, onion Ring Tower was huge. They were really good. Uh, I couldn't even finish it. Uh, and then I had uh, a couple, and then a couple nights I ordered room service simply because I just, again, I didn't feel like fighting the elevators. So, uh, small charge, you know, I think it was like $8 plus a 18% gratuity. And they had some basic uh, items. They had like rigatoni, uh, bolognese, uh, they had like a, a salmon, grilled salmon. They had the, the royal burger, grilled cheese. Couple, you know, two or three different types of salads, desserts, um, and you know, both times, you know, I, I had the, I think the Royal Burger one time, and the next time I had the Greek salad uh, with the chicken wings, and no complaints there. The service was pretty fast, and um, so all in all, um, I think that you know, food wise, I felt like the food was pretty good. I know a lot of people. Didn't agree with that, um, but that's just my opinion. Uh, the room, the room that I had was, like I said, it was an interior, pretty sizable. I did put a video out, uh, a room review on that. Uh, plenty of power, you know, power outlets all throughout the room. One thing about it, though, there was the uh, the air conditioner was tended to cut out. I don't know if that was like a you know, uh, something that needs to be fixed or not. I did let my cabinet steward know. But you had to keep an eye on it. And uh, from time to time, it would turn off. So you'd have to turn it back on. Because you'd start to feel it getting warm in the room. But, 
other than that, uh, I felt pretty comfortable in the room. Everything was brand new, you know. Uh, bathroom was adequate size, I think. It wasn't huge, but but it was big enough uh, for definitely for one person. You know, if, if there was a couple sharing that room, there was kind of limited shelving, you know, to put stuff in the bathroom. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Like I say, it was only three days. And so, you know, I tried to see as much as I could. And, and, and uh, again, I was on a group cruise. So, you know, you try to talk to, spend time talking to people. And, uh, you know, my, I guess my closing thoughts and uh, on it is it's a beautiful ship. <clears throat> it's everything you'd expect out of a out of an oasis class with just a few more bells and whistles you know brand new different color schemes newer furniture things like that a couple new venues here and there but it's still an, it's an oasis class you know um having said that the price you know had i not had i not been had there not been a group cruise going uh, that i was interested in going with I would not have booked it, and I don't think that it's worth the money. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it to another person. Um, you know, if they were interested in going on an Oasis class, I would. I would tell them to go sail on Harmony or Allure or something like that, Symphony. You know, because you know, for a three-day cruise, I paid more than a seven-day Alaska cruise. And so really, so really at the end of the day, that extra money, all you're, all you're paying for is just to say you sailed on the newest, greatest, uh, royal ship, you know, that's really all it is. It's, it's kind of like, you know, paying more for name brand jeans or name brand tennis shoes or something. You're just paying more for that name brand. Well, that's what, in my opinion, that's what you're paying for here. It's, it's, you're just, it's just, Hey, I got to sail on the newest ship. That's about all I got out of it, um, you know. But it's but it is a nice ship. I'm not gonna you know to take the money out of it. It's a beautiful ship, and there's plenty to do. And definitely on a three day cruise, I can't imagine anybody being bored or or not being able to find something to do. So there you have it. There's that's that's pretty much uh, my thoughts on it. Oh, um, and before I forget, the debarkation was. One of the smoothest, fastest debarkations I've ever had. Uh, I carried my own luggage. I only had, a, I, since it was a three-day cruise, all I had was my backpack. And so if you were doing the express, you got to go first. And uh, when I went down, it was like right at about 7 o'clock. Nobody in line. And so I just walked literally straight off the ship. The terminal at Port Canaveral was easy, you know, it's facial recognition. I, I wasn't picking up luggage, so I just went straight to to the uh, customs where they did the facial recognition, and then boom, I was out on my shuttle, gone. But yeah, that's it, folks. That's that's all I got. Uh, let me know in the comments if you got any questions about anything, or if there's something I didn't cover and you're curious about it, let me know. But uh, that's it. Uh, you know, if you like this kind of content, please consider hitting the thumbs up on the way out. Uh, if, you, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It's a thousand percent free. Helps the channel grow. Helps push the message out to the masses. And I appreciate anybody that watches, likes, subscribes, shares, comments. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're enjoying whatever it is you're doing. And I will see you on the next video. Take care, everybody.